Jesus Sanchez. That's a name, isn't it? It's you. And I'm glad it's you. And it's a good name. I have been thinking a lot about this day. Um, actually, Jesus and I have been thinking a lot about this day. Through the years and more recently, a lot. We've been preparing him for the ministry of deaconship. Um, but we've talked about what was going to be taking place today. And I just have to tell you, Jesus, uh, as we talked about these things, he got so excited about even just what's happening today. Uh, it, it was very impactful to him. He was excited for all of us to share in this time together with him as we recognize what God is doing in and through him. And so today is that exactly. This time is celebrating and recognizing what the Lord has done in and through and will be doing through Jesus. And Jesus has already been appointed our fourth deacon here at GBC. So that's, that's done. He, he has already been officially appointed. Today we, we just recognize and we celebrate that. And here's the thing. We do not choose lightly who steps into the role of being a deacon. Why? Because the Bible itself, God's Word, gives us the specific qualifications that are important for stepping into this role as a deacon. And I want to share some of those with you from a passage of Scripture that will be right here. You can look with me here, Jesus. 1 Timothy 3, verses 8 through 13. You're no stranger to these verses. We've talked about these. Deacons, likewise, must be men of dignity, not insincere, not prone to drink much wine, not greedy for money, but holding to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. These men must also first be tested, then have them serve as deacons if they are beyond reproach. Now, verse 11 is if a deacon has a wife. It says, women must likewise be dignified, not malicious, gossips, but temperate, faithful in all things. Deacons must be husbands of one wife and good managers of their children and their own households. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a high standing and a great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. By the way, there in verse 12, or 13 rather, it's not, that's not about how you are saved. Right? You're not saved because you're a deacon and you do a good job at it. Jesus was saved like the rest of us who place faith in Jesus through the grace of Christ alone. But it is a special place, a special position to be a part of. And it will give Jesus that encouragement as he continues to minister in his service to the Lord and here to GBC of what Jesus has done in his life and, and the certainty of that. And so that's going to be exciting. Now, you notice in verse 10, it talks about a time of testing. And let me tell you, we have given lots of time of testing for our brother Jesus. To be close to exact, it's about 16 years of testing. I want, I want to tell you in brief the story about Jesus coming here to GBC and what's taken place in those 16 years. And I, I do mean brief because a lot could be said. But he came to my office one morning. Uh, my office, when it was back on that corner of the building, and he said, Jason, I need to talk to you. We knew each other through both working at Surf Market and just being a part of the community. And I said, yeah, yeah, come on in, you know? And he said, okay, let me just get right down to it. I'm empty. I go to Mass. Uh, I don't know if it was every Sunday, but lots of Sundays. Uh, I'm seeking God, and I'm empty. And I said, okay, why do you think? You know, I wasn't going to make it easy on him. I said, why do you think there's such an emptiness? He surprised me because he said, oh, I know. He said, I'm missing a relationship with Jesus. And I want it. I said, oh, okay, well then what do you intend to do about it, Jesus? He surprised me again. He said, well, the other night I prayed, and I think you were, if, if I'm not mistaken, you were in like a closet or something. You went into just this private place, and you just prayed to God and said, I want to follow you as Lord and Savior. And I said, so what are you doing here <laughs> in my office uh, looking for, for answers? You found the answers to this. And that launched into an incredible friendship between the two of us and, and Jesus with so many of you, church family. Uh, through the 16 years now, he came in, he became a part of church services, 
he began to serve in the church not too far into that, just in little ways, right? We weren't making him a leader of anything right on, off the bat, but he came and he got baptized. He got involved in things. He has faithfully been a part of discipleship with myself all 16 years. We meet on a weekly basis and, and do discipleship like Jesus and, and his disciples. And so that has all been building through these 16 years that we have all been able to watch and observe Jesus. I would say that the qualifications that 1 Timothy talks about there are met in Jesus. Would you agree with me? Yes. Yeah. Amen to that. One more point I want to make about the qualifications. It talks about uh, raising up your children. I want you to know that Stephanie, Jesus' youngest daughter, is right here with us today. And she is testimony to the fact that Jesus qualifies in that regard as well, that he fathered her well. And I got to see that firsthand. I got to see that happening. Um, she is an amazing young woman now, married and doing great things, not too far from here, but still a little further than you'd like, huh? <laughs> yes. But she's up here for the weekend to spend some time with her, with her daddy. So I think that's awesome. Now... As we talk about you meeting the qualifications for that, uh, I also want to mention that the word deacon in Greek, dekanos, it means servant. When I look at Jesus, that's exactly what I see. He has such a servant's heart. And to bring even more picture to it, if you dig a little deeper into the word dekanos, like a lot of Greek words, it's a couple of words merged together. And the picture that it literally says to kick up dust. It's the idea of, and where we get servant from that, is the idea of someone on an errand running to go and get whatever it is, and that it's kicking up dust as they're going. Hey, Zeus, you have kicked up so much dust in GBC. It's, it's unreal how much dust you have kicked up in here. And I mean that in a very positive way, that you have served in many ways. As a matter of fact, not only do you kick up dust, Dirt. Jesus cleans up a lot of the dust and dirt too. I don't know if you realize this. The church does not, the church building does not stay clean on its own. I'm going to brag a moment. He probably doesn't want me to. But Jesus, just one of the ways, this is one of the ways he serves. Every week after he gets off of an exhausting shift over at Surf Market, he will come up here, what, like 8.30? 8.30 at night, right after his shift. And he'll spend an hour to two hours cleaning the inside of our church building before he heads home. And that's every week. He's even done it on vacations until recently when we said, you can't anymore. You need a week off. But that's the kind of behind-the-scenes service that many of you don't even know that he's been involved in. And again, that's just one example. So your service here, both physically, like that kind of stuff, and spiritually, coming up and reading um, our, our call to worship passage every Sunday. A man who's terrified to get in front of people, but is bold to come and do that. I mean, that is awesome. The, again, these are just ways in which he serves. So, I want to do something really special with you in this. I'm going to have the deacons that we have here come and join us on stage, and we're going to pray over you. So I'm going to give you a, a chair to sit in right here. There you go. And I'm going to get all spiffied up for the pictures because I said bring your, bring your uh, sports coat. So I've got mine here. See, look at that. And so we've got two of our other deacons here today. We have Professor, uh, the Professor Rick, and we have the Zebulon, Doug, as they come up. My uh, father, Doug Baker, Hart, is not able to be here with us today. Go ahead, you can, if you need some assistance. Yes. Thank you for coming up, Professor and Zeb. And you guys can just come up behind the chair here. Uh, so Har is not able to be here today. He knows it's happening. He desperately wanted to be here. But he wanted you to know that he's praying with us in this moment and that he is with us in spirit and that he's very proud of you, Jesus. So go ahead and take a seat there. And we're going to lay our hands on you. We're going to pray for your ministry. 
Uh, thank God for the ministry that he's already given and, and the ministry that's ahead. And so um, I will close out the prayer, but both of you take a moment to, to pray over our brother. Father, we thank you for bringing him to this place of worship, so that we may be brothers and sisters to him. We thank you, Lord, for all of the various things that Jesus has not only done here, but worked with people, some we probably don't even know about, people that have needed his counsel or needed his friendship, and we truly count him as a friend and a brother. We thank you, Lord, for bringing him here, for helping him to see you as he has each of us over time. Please keep us all from evil and the evil one, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lord, we do thank you so much for all the things that Zeb and Professor just prayed over Jesus. And Lord, I, I want to pray uh, for your protection over Jesus, spiritually and physically, as he serves you, Lord. We, we do pray that any uh, attacks of the enemy, Lord, would be met with his faith and our faith as a church held up together like that shield of faith, Lord. I, I pray that um, in any attacks that the enemy would want to bring in his mind, that, Lord, your word would be as that helmet protecting his mind, his thoughts within your truths, Lord. Uh, we pray for victory in that. And Lord, I pray that as Jesus continues to minister, not only right here in the church building, but in our community, Lord, I, I pray that, that you would bring great fruit through that ministry, that more and more people would be, come to know you, Jesus, through his servant's heart, through his passion and his desire for others to experience what he has experienced in his life. Lord, we, we thank you for the years that he has already served, and we, we praise you, Lord, ahead for the years that are yet to come. We thank you, we praise you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Truth. Thank you. Thank you, deacons. Thank you. Church, your deacon is this. Yet, we have a certificate of uh, deaconship for you, and I think we're supposed to pose for pictures at this point. <laughs> That's what they do in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Maybe we could get a little dust on there, huh? <laughs> Kicking up dust for the kingdom. I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Was that special or what? Yeah. That was cool, yeah. And there's going to be cake at the end of service in honor of Jesus. And so the cake, if I understand it correctly, is on the it's hallway the tables. And there's, and there's tables in the dining room where you can go. And there's snacks too, I think, right? Snacks and cake. And there's two different types of cake. There's one that is... Gluten free. Yeah, there's um, caramel tres leches cake wow. oh. and then a gluten free chocolate cake. Okay. So, um, Jesus, you can have half of each and then whatever you can <laughs> go from there. So, that's going to be out there. At the end, we can stay and, and fellowship that way and celebrate. Um, but for right now, we're going to have.